that's big boy. So that's a Seiko Monster. This is a first generation orange dial Seiko. Um, you have to have a Seiko dive watch in the in, in my collection. You have to do it, uh, especially being a diver and you know a Seiko guy. Um, but I got this when I was working down in Miami, Florida, um, on an opera contract. I had to take a different route home um, to buy some groceries, and I stumbled into this little kind of bodega jewelry store place, and they had a bunch of these like new old stock Seikos sitting out, stuff from two thousand five, six, and seven. And I called my buddies. I was like, "Hey, this jewelry store has got like three or four of these." several monsters in, in the window. Like, I'm going to go see how much they are. If we get them, they're like, yeah, go check it out. So I go in and the lady doesn't speak a lot of English and I don't speak a lot of Spanish. And so we kind of figure out eventually that I want to see these watches, these ugly orange watches in the window. And she gives me how much the price is and they're selling for their original like 2005 retail price. And so I buy all three of the orange ones. I actually went back to buy a, a black dial one to ship off to a watch friend in Canada. Um, and so me and two of my other watch buddies have this exact same watch, the 2005 Sable Monster. And this is great, you know, being a diver, this is great. I've worn this on night dives before because the loom nice. plots were so large compared to some of my other divers. That Sago loom just can't be beat. Is that why Sago is a thing for you too? Is particularly the function or is it some other... I think it's nostalgic in a way, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're looking to get a great watch at, at an affordable price point that realistically could just be one watch, I still think you're hard pressed to, to beat Seiko. And since I started with a, with an SKX as my first watch, I think there's something nostalgic about always having a Seiko diver in the lineup too.